G'day folks and welcome to this episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore with you from the Learn to Paint Academy. Now in this episode we're going to do a fun little painting of a photo that I took when I was in the west coast of Wales, a little fishing village there. And I came across these old weathered little boats here with the nice red buoys and I thought that would make a really interesting uh, painting for us to have a go at. The boats are very weathered so we might just brighten them up a little bit. You've got that slipway there and the nice stone wall behind it. Okay, I'm painting today on a 9 by 12 inch canvas panel board and um, just doing this as a little demo painting. So I suggest you do the same. And I'm using just tiny little bit thinner. So I'm using the uh, Artisan um, water mixable oils. You could easily do this project in, um, in acrylics. Just wherever I use a little bit of that thinner, just add a little drop of water, right? And I've used water plenty of times as a thinning medium for our uh, water mixable oils as well. Okay, so just mixing the blue and the red, we get a nice loose mixture. We want to start off with our paint mix here for our drawing. We want this to be very loose and thin, almost like ink-like consistency. So most of the boats sort of sit here, here, and here in the painting. So um, that's important that we understand you know, which part of the painting they're in. I'm going to adjust the composition just slightly, which you'll see in a moment, um, just for editorial purposes. So I want to get that angle of that one there correct. Okay. So you can just see a little bit of that side there. And then this one comes around. Now it might even be worth trying to sketch some of these before so that, that's wrong that angle that needs to come more around to around about there okay and then we'll bring that back around actually that that line there wasn't too inaccurate so we'll bring that to there okay and it's got a little couple of sections in there another one there Okay, now you've got to be careful I don't make them too big. That's almost too big, but that's okay. We can pull it back if we need to. And then this boat here intersects the that one. So it's sort of sitting just slightly behind um, the first boat there, which creates some nice layers and depth. Now that one is going up here now because it's further away. Just be careful we don't try and make it too big, right? A little bit like that and as I said if you have trouble with these shapes I mean I'm, I'm obviously having a little bit of trouble but I think we're getting reasonably close um, best thing to do is get your sketchbook out before you attempt to attempt to get these in just right with the brush okay now do they need to be a hundred percent accurate to the photo not necessarily I mean part of being a good artist is being able to edit out the subject a little bit if you need to okay to um, create a, a more interesting um, composition okay, now this one actually runs out of the photo so I'm going to have to make some See that side of it. Yeah, just make some uh, assumptions up the top there. Okay, but look, overall, I'm quite happy with those. I think they've given us a, a reasonably good starting point. This one's slightly on an angle, so we've got shadow. Actually, let's get in that shadow now. We've got shadow in there, so all in this section in here, and then shadow in there. The shadow goes up to there, and then it runs sort of through to there, and that's all in shadow in there. Okay. And then underneath this one, we've got the shadow coming in through here. I'm running up. Well, there's a bit of a gap, but the way I've drawn it, I'm going to connect those shadows up and through there. Okay, so I'm going to be slightly different from from the uh, photo, which again, look, that's perfectly fine. You don't don't panic if you don't feel like you've got your photo or your drawing rather 100% accurate to your photo. Uh, the photo is just there as a starting point. So now we've got this slipway that runs through here, and I'm going to thin. I'm going to make that nowhere near as prominent as what it appears 
in the photo. So I'm going to put the brick wall there, the brick wall there. Okay, get some nice stonework into that. And then this edge of the concrete there is all in shadow. Okay, so it'll give us a nice dark running through there. And if that brick wall or stone wall comes to there, then it's going to restart at around about there and run through there. Okay. And then we can probably just put standing up here because there are some of the other photos I've got of this scene. There's um, boats leaning against the wall there. So we'll just pop a couple of those in. We'll see. We may not put them in, but we may. We'll see how we go. And we'll just extend that stone wall up into there and run that slipway through there. Okay, first things first with the blocking, I'm going to go for uh, those darks, those shadows in there. So, because it's a little bit tight, I'll, normally I'd use my uh, a bigger brush, but I'll just go with this medium sized brush just to get some of those shadows in. It is just a little bit tight in there. Okay, so I just blue, red, little pinhead of the yellow in there. The yellow will just grey it back ever so slightly. And again, we're doing our blocking. We want that to be the paint there to be fairly thin. Okay, don't get too thick at this stage. It'll just make our life too challenging when we go to put in our um, lighter tones later on. Okay. So let's work that shadow. This, this shadow is actually quite effective because it allows us to cut out these shapes. Run that in through there. It's a little bit bluey grey, like a slate, which would be uh, typical in whales there but what I'll do is I'll just push it slightly more to, on the orange side just to get a little bit of warmth in the background there and again this is very thin paint we're going to be painting over this so okay and we'll just cool that down a little bit with a little bit more blue and we'll work that up into that section there. That's going to be our darker part of that wall there. And around these other two boats on this side of the wall. Concrete. So that we'll get some titanium white there on the palette. And let's just bring that into there. Now this, remember we're just blocking in here. We're just getting colored down. And we reserve the right to then change it later on if we need to. Um, so I don't get too hung up on our initial mix. We want to try and get it as close as we can, but it's, you know, it's as much about values as it is about color at this stage. So I just mixed up a light grey tone there. And I'm pushing it slightly cooler because I want to warm up the sand. Um, but that may, you see that's like a grey concrete. That may prove to be a bit flat and boring as the painting progresses. So we'll keep our minds open to the possibility of reworking that. Now, I had somebody the other day leave a comment saying that when they do their block in, it all ends up looking blocky and blurry. And they're a bit concerned about that. And my response was, well, that's kind of how it wants to be. We're not defining anything here at this stage. We're not trying to finish any of these shapes. We're keeping our options open um, currently. And it's just about really establishing a values pattern as much as anything.
You can see all that needs to be tightened up. So don't, don't try and paint it too tight and rigid at this stage. I'll get some Lizard and Crimson in there just to keep it on the warm side. And let's just work this in. So don't fuss with this. Obviously, cut around your shapes correctly. You make sure you get those right, but don't get too pedantic about this part of it. See there, I'm pushing that quite warm in parts. We've got a little bit creamy and milky in parts also, but that's okay. We'll adjust that. So on this boat, it's kind of a whitey tone, but it's all dirty and mucky. What we'll do, we'll paint it as a bit of a shadow, because it is in shadow. So we'll get a bit of white, a bit of blue, and a bit of red. And it's probably darker shadow than what you realize. Um, so we'll try and reflect that and push it more to the blue side to keep it a little bit cooler. So that's a white in shadow kind of tone. Shadow line there. I don't see that as being a problem. And I should get a little bit lighter. Is it just the way I've drawn it? I've got a little bit of that wall showing. Um, the way it is in the photo, it's probably not showing that much. Now we'll come in with the um, ultramarine blue. Just a little bit of white into that. And I'll just dirty it a little bit, I'll take some of that muck. Don't want it to be too bright. That's around about it. that a bit thick but not to worry that blue and I won't put in the um, any more into that boat so I'll just get a little bit of work done into these boats now and then we'll spend most of our time working on it in step three so for the moment I'll just get a little bit of work done so I'm just mixing up a darker shadow tone now for that readier boat 
It's already purple I've mixed up there. Okay. And then that last boat is quite dark on the inside of that last boat, so let's get a dark tone for that. Okay, well there you go folks, that brings us to the end of step two. I think we're making reasonable progress, we're on track. There's a few little things that maybe aren't working, like that's probably too dark, the um, supply, so we might lighten that off in step three. But what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to let this sit for half an hour to an hour. Just let it tack off a little bit. Um, and if you're using acrylics, of course, you want to let it dry fully before we come back in and do uh, the next step. So what we'll do in the next step three is we'll really bring these boats to life. That's where most of our work and effort's going to go. We'll lighten perhaps the slipstream. We'll put a few little details in the sand and then we'll have a nice finished painting. So I think we're on track. Let's have a quick break and I'll see you shortly after the break. Check. Okay, welcome back folks. Well, we're now going to do step three of the more method of painting. This is uh, looking quite good. I think we're on track. We just need to make a few little adjustments, which we'll do now. And then we'll detail up the boats and a few other little details. And this will come together as a nice little painting. So let's head back down to the palette here. It's just getting the value of this uh, causeway or slipway there adjusted. But I do think it's a bit too dark there. So we'll just warm it up and lighten it. And we'll see what effect that has. I won't completely lose the dark that I put underneath there. I'll let some of that come through. This will change the whole look and feel of the painting, which I felt was just a little bit too dark, even though we've got some more lights to put in here. So now we'll get a little bit of work into that background wall, which is a stone wall. So there's a blues and gray, bluey grays rather. Um, and some lighter tones in there as well. I won't go too light with it, but I'll definitely keep it on the cooler side. And let's just come in here and We we'll use that underpainting there. It's got that sort of warmer ground that we put in earlier. And we'll mix it up a little bit. We'll just darken it here and there.
a little bit more yellow into it in parts. But I don't want too much detail in this wall because I don't want it to draw the eye, right? So um, just a minimal amount of detail is all that's required. Just to make it look like it's a bit of a stone wall there. Um, build these up. So inside that first boat with the blue, there's um, it's got a bit of a dirty yellow ochre colour. that to there and we'll go just slightly lighter slightly bluer I get that balance there right between the uh, side wall which is a little bit darker and here Careful, I don't get this out of proportion too. Get a little bit of cabin yellow into that, just a tiny little touch. Just to warm it. There you go, it's getting a little bit more. It must be just slightly on the yellow side. That's in around here. Obviously, the light bouncing back up off of the rocks and the sandy area there. Which means that my shadow tone there is probably a little bit off, so I'll just get that a little bit warmer. Let's just try that. No, it's too, too vibrant. That's a bit truer. Let me just bring this back 
and through here. That just wants to come back to about there. And then there's a blue piece sticking out. Just a little bit there. Use plenty of thinner for this, or if you're using acrylics, you use water to dilate this paint down. And then let's come in here and go. sort of runs down into there. We may lose that a bit later. But I'll pop it in just as an indicator for the moment. I put it into that grey area, didn't want to have pure white or anything. Okay, now there is, take a bit of that light, put it into that dark there, because that was the dark that we used in the boat, because we know that there is a bit of light catching just in through here. When we get blue and white, through there, make this shape more interesting. Okay, and then I need to get a dark version of that.
little bit of blue on that saving here, I think. And that shadow that I put inside the boat there is not dark enough. So we just need to... Not enough contrast there. I'll mix that up. got a bit out of control there but that's actually probably going to work a little bit better I suspect. I think it's actually a better tone than what I had just a moment ago. We'll work with it for the moment and just see how we feel. But I kind of feel it might work a bit better. A little bit more red. the back here Let's get these red boys in. Don't want to make too much of them. The fact that they're red means that they're going to stand out anyway. But, um, we don't want them to dominate the painting. Let's put a couple in like so. And then I'll get a couple a little bit lighter. I feel like we need some more work into the uh, ground area there. Get a little bit more variety into our yellow. And make sure we keep it roughly the same value, although you know, we'll go a bit lighter.
now. So they're all rusted old chains. So I've just used the alizarin crimson and the yellow ochre, which creates sort of like a burnt sienna effect, depending on the ratios you use. So what have we got here? We've got these chains. Now it's going to need to be darker than that because I've lightened that sand right off. So. If you want to do a really bang up job, you would um, put every link in these chains. Put a bit of shadow into it. Okay, and then there's ropes. So with these ropes, we will um, use more pure white for that. Well, not completely pure, because I can brush, clean my brush out properly. So I'll have a little bit of a dirty tone in there, but that's okay. It's slightly on the gray side, and I don't think that's going to kill it. Something popping out the end there. So a little bit of light paint there and there. There's this chain that's off of there. There's something coming down off the back of that one. On this boat here we've got a few little highlights. Okay, so a few little details in there, all of which just add up to make it a more convincing sort of um, effect overall. I'll run that one up there somewhere. Well, there you go, folks. Nice little painting of uh, some boats in a Welsh village there and a fishing village. And I think it came up okay. You know, it's not, not perfect, but it's close to what we've got here. We've got the similar sort of values here. We've got a little boat shapes and they're working. They're not perfect, but they're working. And with a little bit more thought and care, you can certainly bring this to a even higher level of finish. And it would turn out to be a you know, terrific little painting. So um, as a little demo, I'm happy with it. And uh, it's one that I might end up doing as a bigger painting and a more finished painting at some point in the, you know, later on. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I've certainly enjoyed bringing it to you. Now, make sure you go and check out every episode of Learn to Paint TV. I'll put the web address underneath me here. 
And if you haven't done so already, please go and register for our free course that we give away, which is the Learn to Paint um, introduction course. You'll find that at the Learn to Paint Academy. Web address is underneath me again here, and just go and look for the free course there. And you know, I go through the more method of painting in more detail, and there's four or five full painting demonstrations for you to have a go at and, and uh, learn more. And it's our gift to you as a thank you for watching here today. So thanks very much, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Learn to Paint TV. Until then, happy painting. Cheers.